How's it feel? How does what feel? Serving an instrument of corporate supremacy. Let me hazard a guess. You're talking about the church. Isn't it true the OSI is just a cog in the machine of oppression? I'm glad you're asking questions, Felix. Curiosity is the foundation of the scientician faith. Don't try and convert me, preacher. You ever want to hide a body? You could dump it in that sulfur pool. If I fall in, you'll pull me out, right? Well, hello, and welcome to the home of the Iconoclasts. I'm Rose. Please, take a pamphlet. In it, you'll find everything you need to know about Graham, his philosophist truths, and the Iconoclast way. He wrote it himself, you know. Oh, oh no, I'm so sorry. I keep forgetting. We're out of pamphlets. Gosh, blast it. Why, we're the only free people in Halcyon. No corporations, no shackles, no problems. Oh, those are just hurdles. We deal with them as they come. You're welcome to stay with us, so long as you can earn your keep. That's a nice way to think about it. Graham would be our father. I suppose Zora might make a good mother if the two of them could stop arguing. You can think of those two as our leaders, but they're more like examples. We all ought to be more like them. Why, he's our founder. Graham taught us about philosophism. Through him, we came to the eternal truth. I'm glad you're asking, by the way. I hope you'll consider staying. She, well, she's been with us since the beginning. I think she was our sawbones back then, but now she's more like our commander. She goes and finds people in the wilderness and gets them to come here. And she keeps us from being chewed on and whatnot. She's liable to take your head off if you screw up, but then she'll sew it back on for you. Graham's place is in the large building straight back. Thor is sometimes there talking with him, but usually she's in the triage clinic next door. Oh, Graham settled here a long time ago. 
Shoot, I wish I had a pamphlet to give you. It's all in there. I wasn't around back then, but they say a lot of the old MSI corporate folks died here. He calls it a spiritual metaphor, something about rising from the ashes. The new boy! Yes, he's quite clever. He took to our teachings very quickly. Last I saw him, he was headed into one of the buildings up the hill. Welcome to the Emporium. I'm Bronson. What are you buying? Yeah, plenty. If you're the type to fix a thing or two, I've got a couple reports I need to follow up on. The pipes up on Milton's house burst. Someone needs to shut them off. Then there are the cables outside the bar. A sprat chewed through them, and now they're spitting lightning. Then there's the old guardhouse outside town on the way to the old Bayside Terrace. Someone needs to reset the comms breaker there. I ought to tell you, most of these systems are routed through one of our terminals. You might be able to handle some of them remotely if you know your way around a computer. We sent Milton out to check on the comms tower a while ago. They ain't heard back. I'd wager he got eight. Up the hill. It's right on the cliff's edge. Philosophists. This place wasn't half so pretty in the cereals. Looks like I'm not the only new face around here. What do I call you, stranger? You here to join the Iconoclasts? Help us free this world? I am not a little boy. Haven't been one for decades, no matter what my mama wishes. I take it she's still looking for me? I'd hope she'd accept my decision. According to her, stepping foot outside of the house in broad daylight is too dangerous. My entire life, she crammed a fear of danger down my throat. 
Don't go play with friends. Bantasaurs will tear your arms off. Don't leave the city. Raptodons will spit acid on your face. Marauders can violate you. You'd fall in a sulfur pool. I stuck around way too long, ruled by her fears. I'm 42 years old, but she still sees me as a little boy in need of her protection. I won't stand for it, I tell you. Stars, I don't know. My mama's a stubborn woman. She won't quit until I'm dead. That can be arranged. You know, that might just work. You go back and tell her you found my body beside the road, all mangled and tore up. If she believes me dead, she won't look for me no more. I know it sounds extreme, but I can't go back. I just can't. This is the only way I can think of to be free. Oh, right. Uh, I guess you could take my daddy's ring. I've worn it ever since he died. Mama would recognize it right away. You take this back to Stellar Bay. Tell my mama I died and you found that on my body. I know it'll be hard on her, but it's the only way.
I'm saying is it ain't worth it. It's gonna taste like sulfur all the same. Nuh-uh. Taro's got that sweet love. Infamous Amber Heights. What are you buying? I'll be damned. Thanks for doing that. Here. Zora sets aside a bit or two for people who help out. Before you ask, no. It ain't pay. Just being generous to folks who do a good turn. Ain't seen you before. You from one of the outer steads or what? You poor some bitch. I hear tell the dust storms get even worse out there. Welcome to the heart of Iconoclast country, sister. In charge? Huh. <laughs> We're Iconoclasts. Every soul a sovereign power. We do for each other on account of it needing to be done, not because some fancy pants manager said to. Now you want to rephrase that question, maybe ask who's respected hereabouts, I can give you a sensible answer. Every soul here knows to keep a weather eye out. Everyone's lost somebody to the wildlife. That didn't stop Miss Zora from picking a few souls and imposing a schedule. Be here then, leave there later. Downright on icon In icon Well, it ain't what we do. Take that on top of what happened on the Northern Expedition. She and Graham are exchanging harsher words than usual. When the Monarchists wanted to settle down and play nice with the board, Graham was the one that took a stand. He's the reason we're here, breathing free air. Zora's our best sawbones. Nearly every soul here owes her their life. She's got funny ways, but they work. Well, sure. It's on account of how we all work. No iconoclast makes another do as they say just because. You gotta convince them. The Graham and Zora argue all the time just says the process is working. Vigorous intellectual debate. You see? Welcome to Monarch. The animals think you're tasty, the fungus thinks your lungs are a great place to plant spores. That ain't enough? Look at the sky. Olympus yanks this moon about like a drunk dancer. Storms to curl your hair and quakes to rattle your brain pan. Never seen you before. Take my advice. Move on. Get off world if you can. If you can't, get to the bay. I've been halfway around T1. <laughs> Monarch, they call it now. Been around it twice. Stood at the hot pole and the cold. Nothing on this moon for nobody. There's a lot of heartbreak. A great many things. I'll tell you what. You want to listen to an old man ramble? Might be a job in it for you. I used to run with a squad of mercenaries here. Good folk. A fella named Lamont introduced me. Thing is, I ain't seen them in an age. Stands to reason they got themselves eight.
Mostly we protect the folk from the beasts here. If it's spat, scratched, or stung, we'd kill it for you. So long as you had the bits. We split ways around the time this twice-fucked moon got abandoned. Thing is, I got myself some fond memories. We had some keepsakes of ours we kept in a lockbox. And I've been thinking about seeing it found. Thereabouts? I'll be glad for it, but I ain't stupid. This planet tends to get people killed. I just want some closure. Getting on in years, kid. Eggs ain't working like they used to. Sulfur burns a little too long in the lungs. This joint's looking like my last home. Appreciate it, kid. I'm marking out posts on your map. You spent a lot of time out there. Might be a good place to start. Here's a key for the door. Manta Queen. Yeah, we felled it, mind. But we lost two runners and five gun hands. A total failure, then. 
So much for the ruins. And hell only knows where the Van Oys are. They never showed. I'm sure they're... Ah, let's talk later. It seems we have company. A stranger comes to our home. If you're looking for a path to walk, you've found one. If you're looking for a teacher, I am one. Welcome to the Iconoclasts. The truth that I have come to learn and embrace since shedding the corporate yoke. Out here, we survive by the sheer strength of our spirit. We have no need for the endless rules and red tape of a corporate structure. We do seem to burn through endless ammunition and medical tape, though. Yes, well, such is life. Our descendants will enjoy safety and luxury, but our generation is the foundation on which that future is built. Now, why have you come? A great many things, in fact. We could always use a hand rounding up supplies. Or... Now here's an idea. There's an old printing press I've been trying to get up and running. Oh, yes. Many facilities lie abandoned in the wilderness. I believe the press could be operational again with a little elbow grease and luck. Will you aid us in our cause? Wonderful. I requisitioned replacement rollers for it some time ago. Huxley should have delivered them yesterday. Speaking of which, where is Huxley? You bought rollers? You haven't even cleared the wraps out yet. What are you doing wasting bits on... Wait. Where is Huxley? It seems we're out a runner. If you intend to help our cause, I'll ask you to meet our MSI supplier in her stead. One of our sympathizers, a woman named Carlotta, periodically buys goods on our behalf from Stellar Bay's store. Stellar Bay has caught on, but they remain friendly, though the goods now come at a considerable markup. She meets us in the ruins of Bayside Terrace. From our compound, follow the road north. Wonderful. While you're at it, I wonder if Carlotta still has those high-capacity cartridges? Grab a few, will you? There should be some funds left over from the last shipment. We can use them to copy and modify radio serials. Yes, not just magazines, but their precious dramas. Unbelievable. I hope I don't have to tell you this, but... If there is extra money, would you mind buying, I don't know, food and medicine? Graham, if you need me, I'll be in triage. Gonna need to buy myself an entire Rizzo plant after all this. This is the simple truth. We are all molecular material.
You're back. Please tell me you found my baby boy. Where is he? Where's my little Tucker? No, that can't be true. Not my little boy, not my baby. Wait, are you sure it wasn't someone else? Maybe my little boy's all right. How could you know it was him? That's Tucker's ring. His daddy gave it to him and he never took it off since. How did you... No, no, it can't be. He's not dead, not my child, not my sweet Tucker. I promise I always look out for him. Take the money. Just please leave me to grieve. Velma seem out of sorts to you? She's always cranky. No, I mean, more than usual. Look, you can tell Catherine the new shipment will be ready when it's ready, all right? She's welcome to come up here and pack boxes herself if she's in such a hurry. Sorry, seems I got my cables crossed. Thought you were another shakedown tough from Fallbrook. Hope you can forgive my temper. This job has been running me ragged lately. First, my auto loader foreman stages a walkout and now my chief pescatological health manager is missing. Braxton, he's in charge of getting the fish fat but also making sure they don't get too many tumors. He's a real wizard with pharmaceuticals but he has creative notions of working hours. Comes with living in a free colony, I guess. That he's got his load on and I'm stuck covering his shift? That's, wow. I sure feel like an ass now. Oh, sure. Because Monarch's just teeming with experts in the finer points of Saltuna health. Still, it's good to know what happened to him. And that I ought to start looking for a replacement. Something else on your mind? 
Caleb Herrick. Runs the autoloader operators. He thinks I don't pay them enough for flipping switches and turning dials. He and his whole crew walked out. Say they won't come back unless I pay them more. Because we've got a budget, all right? And in case you haven't noticed, MSI doesn't exactly have a lot of spare bits on hand. Not on Monarch. Sanjar threw out the old work mandates and penalties. Sure, until your workers start making ridiculous demands. You mind slapping him around a little while you're at it? I'm joking. Mostly. Unless you can do it without hurting his job performance. If you can find a way to get him back to work, I'll make it worth your while. Check the Yacht Club. He's usually there. Unless you're here to tell me he's agreed to do his job again, I've got nothing to say. I don't have the bits for it, plain and simple. Besides, if I make an exception for him, I gotta do the same for everyone. She's principled, in at least this area. I will begrudgingly give her that. Thank you. I think. If Caleb wants to keep this job, he'd better get back to it. I'm about ready to hire sublight contractors at this rate. I don't even want to think about that. Or how far behind Braxton's loss alone is going to put us. <sighs> Fine. Tell Caleb he and his team can have their raise, but I need them back here immediately. Sublight boss out of Fallbrook. Handles most goods that come in or out of Stellar Bay. Has a mouth like a ground zig spacer.
Could I get another advance, Mr. Nandi? Just make sure it's properly logged. New face, huh? You from Offworld? A ship captain? Well, I'll be. Here, let me buy you a drink. Consider it an MSI welcome. Why don't you grab a chair? Sit a spell and revel with us. Sure thing. What did you want to discuss? How'd you manage that? Wait, never mind. If I question it, it'll turn out not to be true. Besides, I never follow how you got Velma to part ways with a bit card of her own accord. Here, take this as compensation. It ain't a lot, but I hope it shows how much we appreciate all you've done. Now me and my friends here better get back to work before Velma blows a fuse. laws. Can't a man enjoy the smooth menthol flavor of a stogie slim in peace? 
What I am doing, ma'am, is enjoying the moment. It's so rare that I can seize one apart from the jabbering masses of this wretched place. This law's forgotten town. Cut off from the rest of the colony. Removed from any culture. I recall when Stellar Bay was a proper board-affiliated town with regular shipments of Auntie Cleo's best and all the cereals. Before Sanjar took over MSI and got us all booted. Yes, free to wallow and squalor together. Free to squabble with the iconoclasts over a raptodon infested hellhole. Look, you're making me melancholy. Is there something you wanted? Greetings, and welcome to Monarch Stellar Industries, producers and purveyors of the finest salt tuna in Halcyon. What can I do for you today? Not at all. Mr. Nandi treats us all right and pays us well. I just spent most of my paycheck on Raptodon acid. Laws, no. Sometimes it's canid teeth or mantis warm wings. Whatever Sebastian has in stock, really. So I can talk to him, of course. He doesn't get going about much else. Sort of the strong, silent type. Unfortunately, my apartment's kind of filling up with his stuff. And some of the neighbors are complaining about the smell. I couldn't. What if he says no? Hey, maybe you could ask him for me. I, I mean, a no would still be bad, but it won't be quite as embarrassing if you ask. Oh. Mr. Nandi's doing that thing where he breathes through his nose real slowly. I'd better get back to work. He doesn't talk much, but he's got this quiet intensity, you know? Like there's stuff going on inside his head that you have no idea about. Plus, he's got great legs. It's hard to find a man who doesn't skimp on lower body exercises. Not in Stellar Bay. Everyone else who isn't taken either smells like Saltuna or they're my boss. Besides, a man with a good smile and a proportionate upper to lower body ratio isn't something to pass up. You think that's what I'm looking for? <laughs> You're funny. Sorry, sometimes I get carried away. Have you talked to Sebastian yet? What did he say? You know, sending you is the first bright idea I've seen from that man, because I told him to stop bothering me about it a week ago. I still don't know anything about it, but if you want to help him, Velma's the one to ask. She's in the warehouse. But I'll warn you, Grim wore her patience thin a long time ago.
Sounds like rat. Oh, it does work. I'd give you a friendlier welcome, but I'm up to my elbows and salt tuna guts. This again? I swear, this is the last time I contract for any special requests. You can tell Grimm his poster came in. You can also tell him I got a better offer for it. So now it's going to Nell. Would that about cover it? No. I paid Sublight for it. So it's mine. And when Nell pays me for it, it'll be hers. Grimm may have asked for the poster, but it's not his until I take his money. She runs the bedding parlor across the way. Nice professional lady. She asked me about the poster once. Just once. Made a real generous offer, too. Damn right it is. It's staying locked up in my office until Nell shows with her money. Sure can. If you want to pay me more than Nell's offering. Fair enough. The damn thing's been a headache anyway. Take the poster then. And if I never hear another word about it, it'll be too soon. Something else on your mind? Hey, Velma, I got your caffeinoid pills. You're a lifesaver. Hope Abigail didn't give you a heart. Have you had time to check on that poster yet? I keep wondering if it's come in. Sorry, I just get so excited, and I always feel like I miss everything that happens in town while I'm up here. Would you look at that? The Rizzo's logo is nice and bright, and you can still smell the ink on Mr. Holcomb's signature. I can't thank you enough. Still, you can have the bits I was going to spend at the bar this week. And you know what? Take my old toss ball blocker, too. Never get the chance to use it these days. Hello, stranger. Can I interest you in a raptodon tongue? Or maybe some canid toenails? You look like a woman who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts. Oh, good. Celia hasn't come by in a few days, so I haven't sold much. You look like a woman who's looking for some... Huh. I haven't seen her in a few days. But I've been meaning to ask her how that raptid on acid is working out. I hope it's working okay, because no one else really seems interested in this stuff. Wait. I see what's going on. She put you up to this so she could get a discount, hmm? Don't get me wrong. I'd like to give her a discount. 
She's a real fine lady. Always talks nice and slow, so I understand. But if I give her one, I won't hardly make a bit, on account of no one else having any use for raptodon tongues. You sound pretty sure. And she is awful nice. Okay, I'll do it. Once her shift ends, we'll go someplace nice. Maybe to Chef Raymond's. Have you talked to Sebastian yet? What did he say? Okay, but how did he say it? Did he sound excited? Or like he was just agreeing to it? Was he like, yay, a date with Celia. I've secretly been waiting for this. Or was it more, sure, I don't have anything else going on. Not to worry, if I never buy another Raptodon tongue, it'll be too soon. Ah, look at me going on. I'm sure you've got other things to do and Mr. Nandi's giving me that back to work look. Anyhow, thank you. Aha! The helpful stranger I've heard so much about. Here to do business, hmm? Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me. Did you hear that power play, Celia? They don't make them like this anymore in Halcyon. I only hope you don't judge me by my handshake. Now, what business brings you here? Hiram? Why, he's probably still out at Devil's Peak. Not that he's had the courtesy to notify me, at any rate. But if you're here for him, I suppose that means you aren't here for Saltuna. Now, now, there's no need to humor me. I'm used to this particular letdown. I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but it seems we're back to the drawing board. Thanks to the so-called hazard clause, Monarch has been cut off from the board's resources and protection for ten years now. now. We've kept ourselves in business by trading with individual corporations, but given the off-the-books nature of those transactions, such arrangements are precarious. You talk like Graham. Can't imagine why you'd sneer at the notion of a free colony. Could it be because you're an agent of the establishment? I used to be young and idealistic too, but you can't run a city on high-minded ideals. Exactly. Intellectualism fuels the train to mankind's future, but the tracks the train runs on are forged from practicality. Sounds like something out of the chairman's own notes, Vic. Yes, it's as though the good vicar has plucked the very words from my brain. Well, Mr. Nandi here has a rather ingenious plan to get MSI restored to the board. On our terms, mind you. Are you out of your mind? You can't just go crawling back to your old masters. 
Well, we can't continue to subsist like this either. And if our advertising scheme hasn't borne fruit, then perhaps it's time we took matters into our own hands. It's a two-pronged approach. The first part involves seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. With a Bolt 52 cartridge, of course. If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting the Bolt 52, we'll be able to become one of the most productive and secure cities in Halcyon. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. Why, one of the strongest defenses in Halcyon. An extremely powerful ordinance. I was starting to get bored listening to you, until you said the phrase, extremely powerful ordinance. It is quite the rush. In the old arms building southwest of town, which used to be part of Stellar Bay before we had to move our walls in. These days it's overrun with marauders and raptodons. Do be careful. I've lost more than a few people to marauders and raptodons out there. Oh, and while you're at it, there should be a terminal in the arms building with some dangerous information. Perhaps you could delete it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. What can I do for you? I see. And was his delivery of the MSI authorized greeting up to snuff? Well, that's excellent. I'll see that your feedback makes it into his review. What else can I do for you? Then it's good that I keep such meticulous notes. I've asked myself the same thing many times especially seeing as the legal mechanisms we employed were part of the board's own bylaws. Not intentionally, though that's technically true. For many years, this planet was home to as many corporations as Terra 2. Back then, it was known as Terra 1. As you may have noticed, this planet has more than its share of hazards. And as the other corporations began to tally their losses, they decided to pull out. Our leadership at the time certainly wanted to. And how did that work out? Most regard Monarch as a lost cause. But there were others of us who saw an opportunity. The chance to improve working hours and conditions, to reform MSI from the ground up. It's humane, but it's also good business sense. Exhausted, sick, and malnourished workers are not productive workers. Even a cursory review of the data bears that out. Anyway, we learned of a loophole in the corporate bylaws that would allow MSI to claim ownership of the entire planet once the other corporations pulled out creating the perfect environment for us to enact these new reforms. That's what I thought. But the senior executives laughed in our faces and insisted we be relocating to Terra 2 along with everyone else. Yes. Some of us stayed behind, and as the most senior executive remaining, I ended up in charge of what was left of MSI. I moved forward with our planned reforms, as well as our strategy to assume ownership of the planet. Yet not long after I renamed it Monarch, the other corporations dislodged us from the board and began an official campaign to paint us as lawless savages. I don't know. Everything we did was legal and above board. We followed their rules, and yet they still found reasons to declare us outlaws. Your first mistake was expecting the board to cut you a fair deal. I understand the sentiment, but if we can't rely on some sort of framework, then what do we have? I do think there's something useful in a governing body like the board. 
something that keeps us from anarchy, but I dearly wish it functioned differently. Why wouldn't anyone? They own nearly all the resources and infrastructure in Halcyon. Yeah, and once you go back to him, they'll own your dignity too. Without the board, chaos would overtake the system. Working within the established order isn't a principle to snub one's nose at, Captain. To be on the board is to be part of the colonial community. And being cut off means slow strangulation. I'm not a man to put pride before progress. If membership on the board can ease our hardships and provide us with opportunities, then that's the path I mean to pursue. Besides, I'm hopeful that additional leverage on our part will allow us a more equitable relationship. Don't get ahead of yourself, sir. Yes, yes. It'll be easier to explain once we have the Bolt 52. My hope is to maintain the reforms we've managed here, and who knows? Perhaps once we're restored, we could spread them to other corporations. It's a legal provision that gives the board the authority to cordon off any planet or location that it deems dangerous. Sounds like the board gave themselves the power to arrest an entire planet. They would say it's for the greater good. Yes, making all of MSI criminals in the board's eyes. Rather hard to run a business that way. He and his followers call themselves the Iconoclasts. Lawless anarchists, all of them. If anyone on Monarch deserves the reputation the board's pinned on us, it's them. I will admit, I am keen to meet their leader. Well, be careful what you wish for. Graham has a habit of ruining everything and everyone around him. A chance! They've been doing this for years, and I, well, let's just say I know enough about Graham to be confident that he won't change. It isn't just that they drain our people and resources, Every radical act they commit cements Halcyon's image of us all as destructive rebels and pushes us further from the rest of the colony. So, what's the downside? Shall I begin with the supply shortages or the subtle but constant threat of annihilation? He's lucky the board doesn't take him seriously enough to keep more than a few UDL gunships patrolling Monarch. An Earth Directorate assault cruiser would change his tune. It's almost a shame we haven't seen one around Monarch in a long while. What can I do for you? <laughs> 